It's an undeclared war here in El Salvador. Elite police against MS-13, a gang menace that beheads, rapes and terrorizes. And it's America's war too, because President Trump has declared MS-13 animals that must be eliminated, and these men are fighting with US money and help. A lot of this equipment, American government supplied, part of an effort to try and tackle gang violence back in El Salvador. These men, the Jaguar unit, say their targets are gang leaders to cripple the gang hierarchy. The US participate in training as well as providing equipment. The only thing that the US does not supply is lethal equipment, the weapons and the ammunition. But it does supply us with protective equipment, helmets, bulletproof vests and knee pads. But there's something US taxpayers should know about how America is fighting this proxy war. This unit has a dark history. Many, once in an elite unit called the Special Reaction Forces, the FES or FES, it was disbanded after troubling allegations. The FES had a very lethal track record on the street, killing a staggering 43 people they say were gang members in just six months last year. Some in it has repeatedly been alleged illegal executions. That's a problem for the US, who aren't supposed to fund units guilty of human rights abuses. Critics say some Fez police evaded this dark past by being folded into the new Jaguar unit, so the US had no issues funding them. In fact, the number of gang members killed each year by police has risen five times in two years. A high body count that hasn't, say polls, made people feel safer. It's a culture of alleged impunity exposed in WhatsApp messages CNN obtained where Fez police discuss executions and ask informants help identifying gang members. Can you send us a picture of Shadow, the message says. We're going now. We've located him. Send me his photo right now. We're going to crash that bastard. A local police officer rails at the sloppy cleanup of an execution of a gang member by fellow police nearby. There are witnesses who saw that they were beating that son of a before killing him, but our comrades portrayed it as a shootout. Here, you have bad procedures in practice. If you're going to do some shit like that, you better be sure there are no witnesses. Brutal tactics can drive people away from the police towards gangs like MS-13, into whose world here we get rare permission to enter. We're headed now to one of the scenes of the more prominent killings here, deep inside gang territory, carried out by what locals here say was effectively a police death squad. Nobody disputes that Eclipse, as he was known, was a local gang figure. But they do dispute that Eclipse was armed when police shot him dead. Neighbours say it was simply an execution. Has a little time. They came inside and a little time passed. They're screaming, hand in your weapons. And they replied, there they are, mister. They're surrendering. And all of a sudden, we heard the first shot. And after hearing the first, there was some silence. And after, another four shots were fired. His distraught mother shows us the scene, his bedroom. Here he was, lying down, his hands like this, as if he had been sleeping. They killed my son. She claims they shot him in the back. They say the police never come round here now. This case was investigated, but charges weren't filed. Police rarely, if ever, prosecute their own. In fact, one of the officers accused in this shooting likely now serves in the new Jaguar unit. Using his photograph, a facial recognition expert who used to work for British police identified him in our footage of the new Jaguar unit. These images are very, very clear, very good images. I'm 85% certain, at least, that this is one and the same person I'm looking at. An officer accused of a killing in the old unit, the Fez, is likely in the new one, the Jaguars. A forthcoming UN report will declare a pattern of behaviour by security personnel amounting to extrajudicial executions. Salvadoran police replied they are fighting, quote, terrorists and often arrest them without the use of arms while keeping human rights paramount. More than 200 officers faced court for improper armed aggression last year, they said. 
Lo que pasa es que hay como una, un paradigma. There's a general belief about this unit having a green light to kill these gang members, but that's a lie. This does not happen here, not in any other country. We stick to the legal norms of our country. We can only respond against aggression, and we use the force level that applies to all police corps. And as last resort, we fire our weapons. In a statement, the U.S. Embassy said, The U.S. government takes allegations of extrajudicial killings extremely seriously and has consistently expressed concerns regarding allegations of security force abuses. It provides assistance to investigate, prosecute and adjudicate all types of violent crimes, including those involving suspected human rights violations. They added the U.S. recently provided 500 body cams and tracks alleged abuses so no corrupt officers get their help. The U.S. has tried brute force here and elsewhere before and failed or gotten caught in a longer conflict. As the threat of MS-13 rises, they will have to hope the gangs crumble rather than escalate the fight. Nick Payton-Walsh, CNN, San Salvador.